Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to our Nordangli International School Virtual Open House. My name is Corey, and I am the Director of Admissions and Marketing for NACE. Hello, I'm Alison. I'm the NACE Guangzhou Director. And we're both very excited to welcome you to our open house today. And we're incredibly excited to introduce our brand new Nordangli International School Guangzhou, which is located just in the heart of Huangpu District. Okay, uh, North Anda Guoji Jituan, Zai Xuanchu, Yong Liu Si Liu Suo Guoji Xue Xiao, or Guangzhou North Anda Guoji Xiao, Ji Jiang Si Tam Zhong Guo Chu Yin, Jui Xin de Yi Suo, and Zhe Yi Si Wom Ji Xu Hui Gun, Masen Li Gong Da Xue, Her New Year, Julia Xue Yuan, Ji Mi Her Zhuo, Wei Yu Er, Her Xiao Xue Jie Dan, Xue Sen, Duo Sen Ding Zi, Zen Yi Ge Xue Xiao de Se Si, Yang Hong Wom Mian Xiang Yi Dao Si Yi Sui de Xue Sen, Ji Xin Zao Sen, Zen Ge Xue Xiao Hui Wan Xuan Si Yong Yin Si de Jiao Yu Ti Xi. Our goal this morning is to introduce you to who we are uh, as a Nordanglia school. So uh, instead of taking you right there, which we want to do anytime, we can set up an inquiry later to do a tour. We're currently at, uh, broadcasting from our sister school, the British School of Guangzhou and their South Park campus, which is a perfect example of a primary school that we can kind of exemplify what our new campus is going to look like. So the goal today is to introduce you to everything NACE. Uh, and to do that, we've brought in a bunch of teachers and admin who are down in classrooms ready to meet you this morning, including our principal uh, and the new head of phase, who Ms. Tracy is actually in Cairo right now, so she's sent us a video for you to see. Following that, Alice and I did a tour of the new campus just a couple of days ago. So we have a pre-recording of that that we're going to show you to take you around that site and, and uh, highlight some of the progress we've made so far. But then we're going to jump back here uh, and meet some of the teachers in the classroom so that we can show you exactly what it is we do when we move into a building and set it up the way uh, our students need. So a full day uh, of meeting all of our administrators and our teachers. And in the end, we're going to sit down in a panel and answer all of the questions that you have ab uh, about our school. As you can notice here on the bottom, you can live chat us with some questions and our colleagues in the admissions team are going to be there to answer you live, but we're also going to keep those answers and ask the panel with teachers and, uh, and our principal uh, to give you a nice full rounded view of who Nordangli International School Guangzhou is. Mr. Thomas. Let's go meet him. Okay, so for those who don't know me, I'm Mr. Thomas. I'm the uh, principal of the British School of Guangzhou. Um, I think it's a good idea to give you a little bit of uh, uh, an idea of my background. Um, I was actually uh, a deputy head teacher and the head teacher in the UK uh, for uh, six years uh, before moving to China. I, I first came to China in 2004. Um, uh, to, to help to open the British School of Beijing, which is in uh, San Litun village. Uh, I interestingly, that was actually the, the first uh, British school to open in Beijing at the time. Uh, so uh, from 2004 to 2008, uh, I worked in, in Beijing, uh, and the school grew from a starting number of 30 students to uh, uh, around 680 students in that time. Uh, and by that time, we'd opened a second campus in uh, Shunyi. So 2008, I was offered the opportunity to come to Guangzhou. Uh, I, I came down and uh, had a look at the, the school. At that time, uh, the British School of Guangzhou was just a small school in the lakefront building. Uh, uh, around 175 students, as I remember. Uh, so I joined in August 2008, and between 2008 2013, the school the school grew incredibly quickly, uh, and we developed a you know a very strong reputation for uh, teaching and learning, and for having a a, a particularly strong primary program. Uh, 2013, Nord Anglia took over the British School of Guangzhou. We became part of the Nord Anglia group. Um, and, and from that moment on, uh, I think, you know, our re reputation continued to grow. Uh, and p particularly within secondary, we moved towards a, a, a secondary program and we, we began to get, uh, uh, you know, very impressive academic results for our secondary students. In fact, the, the best academic results within the Nord Anglia group. Um, 
so uh, that that you know from uh, from then until now we've we've grown uh, and become much bigger as a school we've tried to add, add additional facilities to the school every year um, to ensure that our students you know, get the very best educational opportunities for me the new school the NACES school is, is just an opportunity to continue to do that it, it, it's a purpose-built school uh, created specifically for primary and early year students uh, and um, uh, it allows us to continue to expand our current school towards secondary whilst also providing um, uh, a, a, a chance for parents to decide where they would like to be for primary. Okay, moving on to my role. Um, uh, my role's changed as the school here has grown every year. Uh, and once we open our new school, in, uh, the NACES school, and um, my role will actually be across both schools. Uh, I expect that I'll spend three days uh, in uh, the new school and two days in our current school. And really, uh, my role is to ensure that it's the same curriculum, same values uh, in both schools. It, it, you know, it, we are, we are going to be the British School of Guangzhou across the two sites. Uh, uh, we will have a, a, a new head of primary. So we'll have two heads of primary, one based here, one based at NASIS. Uh, they will be responsible to me. Uh, I will line manage them directly. And we want to ensure that wherever parents choose, they're going to get the same school, the same curriculum, the same experience for their children. Um, uh, and I see it as being an exciting challenge. I have to say the, the uh, additional benefit of the new site is, is just that the, the facilities are purpose-built and they really are going to be outstanding. Okay, um, it, with regards uh, any school, the most important thing are the teachers. Um, Recruitment is one of the uh, one of the aspects of my role that I really enjoy. Uh, in in recruiting uh, teachers, um, we are we're the same as any school. Every school is looking for the best teachers, um, but increasingly we're finding that that, that is a challenge. Uh, and uh, for me, it's important not just to get excellent teachers. We need to get teachers that believe in what we are uh, selling as a school. Uh, we don't want teachers to come in and just teach the way they want to. We want teachers to come in and be part of a team and teach the way we believe they should teach. Uh, it's very important that uh, uh, within a year group, uh, they get the children get the same experience. And across the schools, uh, we get the same experience. So we're very much looking for those teachers who believe in our core values and can actually be role models themselves. We want teachers who demonstrate respect and responsibility, commitment and integrity. Uh, and, and above all, we want teachers who inspire children to develop that love of learning. Uh, we want children to enjoy every lesson. Uh, children should be greeted by a teacher with a smile and a teacher who's uh, positive and cheerful and who makes learning fun. Uh, and that's the special something that we're looking for when we're recruiting teachers. Okay, a little bit about uh, Nord Anglia as a group and our partnership with Nord Anglia. I think, uh, uh, you know, we were already a school that had a very strong reputation for um, the performing arts uh, and for sport um, uh, and for the wider curriculum. Uh, our choirs, our performances, our orchestra all had a, a great reputation. Nord Anglia has enhanced that. Uh, you know, they began with the Juilliard partnership and uh, for me that just gave us additional opportunities, particularly for the students and the staff. All of our music team been to uh, Nord Anglia's, uh, to Juilliard's um, school for, for training. Uh, uh, our dance teachers have been to the uh, Juilliard school for training. Uh, many of our students have had the opportunity to go to the Juilliard school. Um, 
uh, also the visiting artists from Juilliard, the alumni, uh, they come regularly and they bring with them, you know, a, a, a great experience and uh, give the children additional opportunities. Uh, our children, uh, our talented musicians have the uh, opportunity of master classes with the Juilliard alumni. Our uh, students who love dance have the opportunity to, to learn from uh, the Juilliard dance team uh, and increasingly we'll have uh, performing arts. Um, since then we've had other collaborations, the MIT, um, it's a very exciting opportunity. Again it's brought professional development for staff, it's brought opportunities for the children, it, it's brought um, uh, the, MIT, the MIT challenges always create an incredible amount of excitement with the children uh, and um, uh, I think uh, that by having this partnership, Nord Anglia have invested in, in the, uh, the facilities within the school to allow us to bring um, maths, um, uh, to allow us to bring together the subjects of um, science, uh, technology, engineering, art and maths uh, and to get teachers to collaborate and work together. Uh, these these uh, collaborations bring great opportunity for the children uh, and I think any of our children who've had the chance uh, to, uh, to visit uh, either Juilliard or MIT or had the chance to take part in these challenges or have been uh, part of uh, UNICEF and have made speeches to UNICEF, these are, these are experiences which will stay with those children for the rest of their lives. And I just look forward to additional collaborations that Nord Anglia are going to bring. For me, it's something that no other school can offer. Uh, only Nord Anglia has the, the size to, to have partnerships with such uh, uh, amazing uh, educational organisations. Finally, uh, um, uh, we are now going to have a, a chance to meet our new head of primary, Tracy O'Connor, uh, who sent us a video, so enjoy the video. Hello, ni hao and welcome. Thank you for joining us this morning on our very first virtual open day. My name is Tracy Connor, and I am joining you remotely pre-recorded from Cairo in Egypt. I've been living in Egypt now for the last nine years, leading in a very successful international school here in Cairo. Previous to that, I taught in the UK, originally graduating from Staffordshire University with a law degree. Following my law degree, I decided that teaching was my call and I decided to do a postgraduate certificate in teaching. My career started over 15 years ago and I am ready to lead Nord Anglia International School as your new head of primary. I believe that education equals learning and learning for me is developing new skills, gaining new knowledge and developing a deeper understanding of the world in which we live. And that is our aim at Nord Anglia International School. We want to make sure that each and every child is able to reach their full potential. Developing soft skills as well as academics, developing empathy, tolerance and respect for others, as well as being academically successful due to our outstanding teaching team leading all areas of learning. Our purpose-built curriculum lends itself to this and enables our hand-picked teaching team to lead lessons with creative and inspiring content to allow each and every student to be excited and engaged in learning. Every child should be able to access every stage of the curriculum. And whether it's a child who needs extension and challenge, or whether it's a child who needs extra inputs and extra support, our teaching team have the knowledge, skills and understanding to enable each and every student to access the curriculum and reach their potential. I believe that children learn best when they're excited and they're inspired. And I'm confident that our handpicked teachers for Olympic Park are ready to inspire children in all areas of the curriculum to ensure that each and every child makes progress in each and every area. Our purpose-built campus will enable our outstanding teachers 
with the teaching spaces to develop knowledge, skills and understanding across the curriculum, enabling every student to reach their potential. I am very excited to be making China my new home after nine years in Cairo. I'm even more excited to be working alongside the BSG family and Mr Mark Thomas in starting up a brand new school with an unparalleled education for all our families in Guangzhou. I invite you, your children and your families to join us as we embark upon this exciting journey. I look forward to seeing you after the summer at North Anglia International School, Guangzhou. 好的，呃，刚刚非常感谢 Mark 和 Tracy 给我们带来整一篇的演讲，然后我也非常非常期待 Tracy 在这个夏天加入我们的学校。呃，现在呢，我们回到了学校里面的其中一个 s t e a m 的课室。Yeah, our goal is to give you an example of all of the different classrooms we have in our school. So this is the steam room, as Allison just pointed out.、Mm -hmm. Now in our tour, our open house today, we want to jump over and show you our brand new North Anglia International School campus.、Uh, it's currently a construction site. But it's our newest international school here、uh, in mainland China, and this school is joining、uh, 66 other schools worldwide that are in 29 different countries. Our, as Mark pointed out in his presentation, our North Anglia family is a big one, and it spans across the globe, giving us access to a global campus of resources for all of our students. So speaking of campus, let's go over to that school and check it out.、Uh, a little earlier this week, Allison and I were there with the crew, and we did a whole tour of that campus. So we're going to show you that now, and then we'll come back to this site and to our live feed to meet with some of the teachers、uh, and talk about admissions in the Q and A. Anyway, enjoy the tour. Hi, Hi everybody! Welcome to our Nord Anglia International School, Guangzhou. Right there, and as you can see, the site right now is still a construction site. Uh, but I'm very, very happy to report that we're way ahead of schedule. So the school is already purchasing all of the furniture and everything we need to move in in the near future. But during this video, you're going to see an、uh, actual construction site with lots of other equipment around and lots of people working in the background and probably some strange noises. We'll do our best to kind of keep that out of this video. 对，我们今天来到了黄浦区的毛岗路，这里距离黄村的奥林匹克中心非常的近，就几分钟的路程。而同时，我们今天从珠江新城出发，来到这里只需要二十分钟哦。<laughs> um, the design of this school. So what we're doing is we work really, really closely with our teachers when it comes to designing the classroom, learning spaces,、uh, and the areas around the building. For us, this is actually the sixth time we've renovated a school. We've done this in multiple buildings in our other locations here in Guangzhou. And every time we do, we talk to our teachers, we talk to our students, and we learn what's best practice in our environments to complement the learning and the curriculum being taught. So that will be a big feature in our design. And during today's tour, although it's a construction site, we're going to fade in and out and show you some pictures of our 3D mockups, or at the same time, maybe one of our other、uh, classrooms in one of our other buildings, to give you an idea of what it is we're going to do to this building when we're allowed to move in. 对，同时的话，我们的音乐教室和我们的表演课都会由茱莉亚音乐学院帮我们参参与设计。同时，我们的 Steam Room 也会由呃麻省理工去给我们设计整一个的流程还有理念。One of the nice design features too is I don't know if you can tell right here. There's actually underground parking, which will be an awesome thing for our parent community when they come to see this one. Yeah. 然后我们今天会带家大家参加我们九到十个不同的位置，看一下我们新校区的一个设施。同时，我们会加入我们的 3D 动画效果，让大家有身临其境的感受。Yeah, we're going to start this tour by going into the reception area. So when you come into our school, you actually just walk down that path there, and the main doors will will be the main doors are just there. So we're going to head down there now and start our tour. Let's go. Welcome to our reception area. So, if you're coming here to visit the North Anglia International School of Guangzhou because you want to do an admissions tour, which Allison and I are very happy to do anytime, just give us a call. Or if you're here to meet one of our staff members or pick up your kids, this is where you start and coming into the building. But it's still very much a construction site, as you can see. And actually, you're still outside right now. So, if you can picture it, there'd be a beautiful glass door here with frosted logos on it. And then when you come in, there'll be student artwork up on the wall. We'll have a giant reception area here with a team that's ready to help or answer questions、uh, and, and for whatever you need when you come to see the school. 
。好，我们继续走，然后在前台的左侧，你会看到我们的校长办公室。然后你们今天已经见过我们的 Mark 和 t r a c y 校长了，对吗？以后如果你们要在这约他们，或者跟其他老师去面谈，我们就会来到这个 Waiting Area， 是我们的等候位置。然后家长们和呃小朋友们可以在这稍作等候。Then you enter into the heart of our school. So this is our courtyard, and in here you're essentially standing in the middle of our North Anglia International School. You can still hear the construction going on on one of the upper floors. Our plan with this area is to create an early years playground、uh, kind of whole zone here, that where our students in the early years can have an outdoor place to play and to develop their fine and, and gross motor skills. Uh, and uh, just have a safe, secure space for them to do that here. And you've probably seen some of that in our commercial and our 3D mockups. 对，我们现在站在的位置是以后专门为一和一到四岁小朋友设置的室外运动和游玩的场所。站在整个学校的中心位置，你会看到我们右手边是我们室内游泳池，然后楼上是我们的两个饭堂和餐厅，然后上面还会有我们的室内的呃体育馆和剧场。所以欢迎大家以后来看我们。Yeah, we got a lot to see. So let's go. So it's important to highlight that the area you just saw will be our early years outdoor environment.、Uh, but we're in Guangzhou, and it rains a lot, and it can get very warm. So we need an indoor,、uh, temperature-controlled. Space for our earlier students. That's what this gigantic room right here is going to be for. So we're going to fill this space with earlier's designed playground equipment、uh, and areas that we can use、uh, the same as we would outdoors. 对，除了针对幼儿阶段，我后面有室内和室外的一个场所之外，大家看到远远那一边停止车的地方，我们会将它全部清理，让成为了一个专业草地的足球运动场，给我们的小学生去运动运运动。然后二楼，大家待会也会看到我们专业的室内体育馆，然后会给小朋友们去呃进行，比如说篮球啊或者其他的室内竞技比赛的。OK， 我们现在来到了我们的游泳池，这是我整个学校里面最喜欢和最期待的地方。<笑>然后这里以后会是个恒温的泳池，同时所有的水都会经过专业的过滤和消毒，因为以后游泳会是小朋友们在学校体育课里面必修的项目。同时在各种不同的课外活动里面，这也是可以供小朋友们继续深造和选择的地方。呃，希望以后小朋友们都能非常喜欢和热爱着来这里玩吧。We're really looking forward to to welcoming other international schools in to have some competitions. And what's really great about having an indoor pool space like this is that it also becomes a learning opportunity, right? So this is a learning environment for us. And even、uh, we have our year fours; they'll do these science projects where they build these boats and they have to float with their own propellers, and we'll have races in the pool. It works really well with our STEAM program and our、uh, arts program and our sciences. It's another learning environment for us to share with our students. Check out the pool. Okay. 好，大家欢迎来到我们的专业剧院。然后我跟 c o r e y 现在站在的位置，以后会是剧院的一个座位底下。然后我们看黄色那个背景墙，我们会有专门的一个舞台在那个位置。然后虽然一切东西看起来还是正在工程当中，包括音响，还有包括灯光，还有所有的位置和舞台的装饰，我们都已经全部定制好了。然后 c o r e y 会跟我们讲讲这个以后我们用来干什么的。It's true. We're going to use this space for a lot of stuff, right? It's a big, big, beautiful theater, and we'll try and show you a bit of a 3D mock-up of what we plan to do with this space.、Um, but in here, we'll be using this for our school assemblies and those types of presentations, where we bring our parents in, so you can see your kids perform on that will-be stage.、Uh, we're also going to use it, of course, for our Juilliard collaboration and our drama program, so our theater arts program. And of course, we're going to bring you in often to do、um, parent meetings、uh, and to describe some of the stuff that we do in the school, explain some of our assessment practices. Those sort of evenings where we bring you in, this theater will be、uh, a common space for you as a parent in our community.
So this big, beautiful, bright room is going to be a library. Um, you've actually already seen one of our libraries uh, where we're going to be taping our live feed in a few days. We're hoping to make that home base. So you'll probably have seen Alice and I there already. If not, it's definitely going to be used for our Q&A. And we need big spaces like this because Nordangli International School is a resource-rich school. We, each classroom will have their own library set up with literature and books uh, and, and resources that the students need to meet the curriculum. Um, but we also want big spaces like this that we can fill with books and chairs and comfortable spaces where the students can come in and build that love of learning uh, and find books of their own interest and more importantly, at their appropriate English level. 说到资源这一方面科学类老师都会在MIT就是麻省理工学院去更多的一个培训还有做职业上面的发展的 Next, let's go take a look at our indoor sports hall. So this is it, our indoor primary play space. Uh, and this is kind of an environmentally controlled sports hall that gives us the opportunity to uh, welcome our students inside on those rainy wet days. 对,这里是我们小学部专门使用的一个室内体育场所,然后以后所有的小学生都会在这里进行体育课,还有我们的校队会每天在这里训练,同时我们会尽可能的为我们的学生提供更多的一个校外活动,就是课后会进行的一些,
and they'll show you the areas and how they set them up and explain a little bit why so that you'll get a great picture of what this environment is going to look like in just a couple of weeks. 对，这是我们诺德安达国际学校广州校区的其中一个课室，然后在整栋教学楼里面，我们每一层楼都会设置不同的教室颜色，让小朋友有不一样新鲜的感觉。同时，整个学校会容纳八百名学生，在全球不同
or a little input we call them, um, with all the children on the carpet. We use our interactive whiteboard. Of course, yeah. So we have our games, we have our introductions to our lessons, usually maybe 10 minutes, 15 minutes. And then the children break off to the different spaces and the different areas in the classroom. Okay. So we might have a group work here with me. Um, it could be we do some work on English. We have our vocabulary here, ready, cool. all prepared. It might be we do some phonics. We do a daily phonics lesson. So that might be something we do. So that's talking about the sounds and helping our children learn to read. So okay. that's our basic program there. Okay. The children can choose. So we're very much into about the children choosing their own learning. Okay, great. And um, what they want to do with that. So we have a construction area. Um, cool. And uh, you can see we have a lot of books here in our area yeah, as great. well. Yeah. So although we have got our construction, we're very much about literacy and mm. bringing reading into every area. So okay. it's not just in English, we have it in maths, we have it in our topic learning, we have it in every area. Okay. Great. Um, the children might choose to come and do some crafts, so they, again they can come and choose. I will sometimes put a challenge out for them and say what would they like, can they make this, can they try and do something with it. But again it's about encouraging creativity and asking questions and mm. things like that. In a, in a typical day, how long is a student in this room? Like, is this all of the learning happens in here? No, we have breakout spaces as well. Okay. Um, so we have spaces where they can go outside for learning. Okay. Um, or we can go into our role play areas. So we often set up um, situations. So we have a new role play area just about ready to open to the children. Nice. I, I kind of want to check that out, but I have a whole lot of questions about this space yeah. before we leave that. Um, so you start every morning for about 10 minutes on the mat with the students? Definitely. So when, when the students come in in the morning, because they arrive by bus, mm. so we often have little activities set up for them. So I might, like here, I've set up some counting and some numbers. Oh, I remember these when I yeah. was in school, yeah. So we use those, we get the children very much into the children using concrete materials and being able to show things. So Everything's in English then, yeah? We have everything in English, Perfect. yes. Good. But our teaching assistants are here every morning as well. So okay. we have um, Chinese teaching assistants. So we have that language that we build up with the children as well. Great. So they've, they've got that comfort that they can speak to both of us. How many students do you have in, a, in your class? Um, at the moment, I have 19. Oh, good. So we, t we tend to try and stay around 20. Okay. Um, but yeah, 19 students at the moment is fantastic. And would you say that like everyone has the same level of English? It's varied. Yeah. I have children who are native English speakers. Mm -hmm. I have children who have come from around the world. So I have children that from Brazil, for example, from Portugal, from different regions within China, mm. um, different parts of Asia. Uh, not very many European at the moment. Okay. Um, but we do have children from England. Um, Spain, yes, I've got a new student from Spain coming Thanks. very soon. So, ah, good. Yeah, good. Okay. Excited. Um, so how do, you, how do you support those students who come in? Because I know a lot of parents are worried that when their kids, especially when they're young, don't speak English. And, mm -hmm. and, and they're worried about communicating, even like, how does my son or daughter ask to go to the washroom? And all of those sort of things. How do you help them, um, or how do you find their English development in these environments? Well, when they first come in, um, all the children are very important. We make sure they have a buddy, and we make oh, sure good. their buddy is a native speaker to them, so that oh, they, they feel idea. comfortable. Yeah. Yes, and so they're kind of paired together and encouraged that that's who they can go to ask questions. Mm. Um, if it's very rare that we don't have anyone that speaks a language okay. that their child is comfortable with, good. but we also teach some sign language. Um, just a little bit. Cool. Um, and we also have picture cards and cues. Okay. And for those children who are coming in, we also offer um, a sales program. So it's looking at English um, as an additional language. We have supports in place for those students as well. Okay. But we definitely have lots of cues, lots of pictures around. You can see every word it has. Oh yeah. So we have That's pictures right. I got it. Yeah, yeah. to go with it. So the, the, this is our code. This is what we encourage the children to do, our code of conduct. Very nice. So, but we definitely 
we have a visual timetable so the children know when we're going to do things. That's actually probably a perfect thing to kind of highlight. So this is a typical day in yes. a year one classroom. Yeah. So we start in the morning, everybody does carpet time, and then it's math class. Yeah, so you can see I'm set up, ready to go. So I'm in the shadow here, yeah. Uh, so what, like, what are they doing in year one math? What would you be studying now? At the moment, um, we are introducing uh, double in, so getting ready for multiplication. But before we do that... In we, year one? In year one. So okay. but we do addition, just to recap on that. So we're going back over what that means. And then we'll introduce the concept. Um, we'll do what we call skip counting. So this week, we've had children counting doing star jumps. So they've been doing like the two, four. Uh, really? So we're introducing <laughs> that kind of thing. <laughs> then we will be practical activities. So okay. one of the activities we're planning is very, we use ladybirds, ladybugs, do you know uh, ladybugs? Yes, of course, yeah, yeah. So they have to match the spots on the other side. Uh, so that they know that double five Sequencing is 10, that, that, that kind of thing. Oh, good. So very, very practical, very hands-on. Yeah, but very advanced at the same time, though. That's not basic <laughs> one, two, three. That's your, yeah, yeah, you're talking multiplication already in year one. That's fantastic. I see lots of visuals up about that, too, on here. That's good. Yes. So definitely it's one of the things we do here is mm. using the, con we call it um, the concrete, pictorial, abstract ideas. We, we start off here with the concrete ideas, then we might introduce pictures, and then yeah. we go into the more abstract of it. Okay. With the number sentences. What about assessment? So how do you, how do you gauge the, the development of the students and, and how do we report that and stuff to our parents? Um, very much formative assessment. So okay. constantly, so for my timetable here, I have my little tick sheets. I'm going through, I work with all the children um, throughout the day, usually in smaller groups after we break out from the carpet. And from that, from my questioning, from seeing what they produce, mm. I'm making my notes. Okay. Who do I need to go back to the following day that needs more support? That Who do very... I need to stretch? Yeah. You know, so we do lots of things like that. That sounds very personalized. Very for each personalized, yeah. yes. Nice. Okay. It's an approach we find that works very well, particularly with the, the, our younger students. Okay. And how, what does the communication with parents look like how, at, at, in the school in year one? Um, currently, we communicate through a weekly learning letter to our parents. Okay. So we put that together as a team. Um, so every Friday, the parents will receive um, notification about what we're going to be learning the following week. Mm -hmm. and, and that covers all the main areas. So it will cover what we're doing in English, what we're going to do in maths, and what we're going to do with our topic. Okay. So they have advanced warning of what is coming up. Okay. So that's on a weekly basis. Um, parents have my email. Oh, okay. Um, wow. So they can email me at any time. You're very approachable. That's good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then this year we've introduced something new called Class Dojo. Okay. So that's a, another online um, service that has a translation app yep. side of it, which oh, we find perfect. Yeah. has uh, really helped our parents with the translation of messages. That's good. So if they have any questions or concerns and stuff, you're easy to get a hold of and, and, oh, yeah. and work very closely with them. Yeah. yeah good. Uh, and report cards? We do all that stuff? We do, yep. yes. We do reports termly. Okay. Um, so we have them at the end of each term. We have report cards, but we also have face to face meetings. Good. So every term we also have um, parent teacher consultations. Okay. So the parents will come in, they'll bring the students with them. Um, we can sit, um, trying to encourage our children to take part in that presentation. Good, nice. So they can tell, the children, uh, tell their mums and dads about their learning as well. Okay. Oh, that's good. At least they can share, uh, share their understanding of what happened so far. Yeah. Um, let's go back to some more of the fun that's in here. So phonetics is happening over in this corner. Well, phonics. Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Yeah. Thank um, you. I needed that correction. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, but we do, phonics is dealing with you know, the, our language, our phonetics. And yeah. What we do in year one, so one part of our assessment process is we will assess the children with what sounds they know, what language they know, okay. and, and then we will put them into proper groupings just for that set. Oh, great. So okay. every day we break up for phonics. Um, you know, so the children can go all over the building and they're at the right level for them. Good. So whether they're okay. entry to new, new to brand new to the language or if they're advanced. Okay. So we take care of all of them. Okay, great. So, yeah. I see a very scary monster underneath a lot of yellow post-it notes. <laughs> uh, well, this was, we were um, looking at describing book characters. So this is Nian. 
and Neon's a very scary Chinese monster. Okay. Yes. So we were talking about how we could describe him. So we started off, this is what we call roll in the wall. So we have a character uh, on the wall. Okay. And then we start off looking at the parts of his body. So first of all, we picked out like his giant claws, his yeah. long tail, his red eyes. And then the children then give me some adjectives to describe okay, him. Okay, very good. So, it's like the soft, hairy body. Yes. So, yeah. <laughs> so although my, I wrote the words, the children give me the words. So okay. these are their ideas, but I scribed it for them. Uh, well, then that begs the question, so reading and writing, um, what are they working on when it comes to writing? Um, at the moment, we're following the English National Curriculum. So we are using um, the guidelines for year one. So that we're currently working on sentence writing. Okay. Um, we're working on using adjectives, introducing those. Mm -hmm. uh, we've just been working on the past tense. Okay. So introducing tenses, um, joining words, using and, because, to stretch their sentences, stretch their words. But we always give them scaffolds. So sure. okay, we would, might model the language for them and then they can take it at their pace. You know, it's, it's funny working in admissions, we're meeting with parents all the time and, and that initial fear of like um, not having the language skills and stuff. Um, we've always heard and around three months in, parents start telling, making comments to us like, I can't believe how much more English they're speaking at lunch or at dinner time and, or how much more engaged they are in English with us at home. It takes yeah. that three month little window of all this stuff just start showing up at parents even though I suspect you're noticing it much faster than that. We do, yeah. we see it very fast. <laughs> because even things like lunch is such an important time for us mm. because I sit with the children and oh, we nice. talk. Okay. So, and when we have new students, particularly students who don't have much English, we choose to sit more with them because mm -hmm. we try and encourage that interaction and the social language as well as the curriculum language. So it's, that's oh. just as important at this age. Yeah. I feel like a student right now, so <laughs> <laughs> I just keep yeah. on looking around. So I see lots of stuff over here. There's lots of comments on this wall over here about toys. Yeah, just getting ready for this new topic. So we have uh, what we call a goal-based learning. Okay, so yes. we start off with a hook to get the children interested. So I've got this all set up ready for the children to come in. So you can see I've got a toy box in here and we open cool. it up. We can see all sorts of really interesting things. Some that might look familiar. Yeah. And then others. What is this? Yeah, good the question. I was about to ask to myself. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's kind of spinning. We can do something. Oh, yeah. okay. So they've got the cup and hook. They've got all sorts of things. So what's the goal of this? It's not to play with them. It's, or maybe it's, it is. <laughs> well, explore, okay. play. Mm -hmm. Ask questions. Yeah. That's the main thing. We want them asking questions. We okay. want them to ask, you know, what is different about this teddy bear to what they have at home? The fact that it's jointed and it moves and it looks a bit old and it looks a bit scruffy. Yeah. Who did it belong to? Uh, yeah, Why okay. is it here? Perfect. And those kinds of questions. What are these toys? What, what are we meant to do with this? Mm. So the idea is just to get them interested. And we've got, again, a little story. Oh, okay. And this is going to be our core text for this. So that means everything is going to be around this story. So the whole themed activity, like the whole thing is based on a book, like you're, you're following with that. Yes. Oh, nice. Okay. And, and then one of our outcomes from this then is linking those ideas of STEAM. So we're talking mm -hmm. about our technology. And this is very much a design technology unit. Okay. So the children are going to be encouraged to make their own toy. Um, so they're going to be looking at toys, how they might um, break, how they fall apart. Okay. And then they are actually going to design and make their own toy. Cool. And then they're going to teach their parents how to make it. Oh, that's a great idea. So they're yeah. taking that learning right home with their parents. Well, we're going to invite parents in. Oh, even better. Okay, good. Yeah. I always like when the parents come in to see us. We're going to invite the parents in and this is, yeah, can I teach my family members how to make their uh, own teddy bear? Nice. Yeah. Ah, cool. Th that makes me think about um, the parent involvement um, and at home and in this kind of learning. Is there a lot of homework for a year one student? For year one, we focus very much on reading. 
Okay. So we encourage um, uh, reading the children take home a reading book every day, mm. and they can change that when it's ready. We also have an online reading program. Oh, okay. So that I know some parents worry that they haven't got the language to support with reading at home, mm -hmm. but our online reading program, um, the books are read to the children in English, and then they can read it back. Okay. And so whenever they're more confident, we can take that part away. So, so the, we hom can the homework sounds very like collaborative with parents that they're really getting in on the learning that way, yeah. not like opening up and doing question one, two, and three from a book, right? No. Okay. And um, we do a little bit of maths homework, so Good. we send home. Try again, trying to make it practical. Mm. So with, um, as I said, with the the Dublin that we're doing, the counting, mm -hmm. that was like I've seen some children have sent me little videos where they're doing their jumping with their families and yeah, things yeah. like that. So it's just practical and cool. I'm looking at how we use number in the real world. Okay. Which is what it's about. Yeah, it is, yeah. Real it's world. It's very much about making cool. connections. Okay. How often speaking of connections, um, how often do you connect with the other year one teachers? Um, as in with the children or No, I mean the teachers. You guys collaborating together. Do very you much. Leave, yeah? Yeah, we do all of our planning together. Okay. Um, we meet every day. So for example, our children here, they have some Chinese lessons every day. Okay. So during that time, all of the teachers meet. We talk about the learning that's happened, what we want it to look like next week, a month's time, three months' time. Okay. So continually looking at the small picture, the bigger picture, and then where they're going. Cool. So now we're also currently thinking about transition. So what happens when they move into the next year? Sure. So yeah. we're planning... Um, some activities for that, some collaboration with our year two colleagues, and also collaboration with our younger children who are also coming up to find out what things look like when they move on up. Okay, wow, nice transition then. Yeah. No surprises, that's the best yeah. way to do it, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You've got lots of like scales and, and I see a bowl of dinosaurs down there. Uh huh. <laughs> So we kind of try to build what the children are interested in. Yeah, so dinosaurs, I know, is, even Corey's interested in that. Dinosaurs yeah. are a big <laughs> thing at the moment. So we go with that. And also, but we try to bring the outdoor in as oh, well. Oh yeah, okay. So we try and use... I'm Canadian, this makes me feel like home right there. <laughs> um, and that's it, so we, we take advantage of whatever we can. Um, you know, we've got that beautiful big tree out there. Yeah, um, we do, don't we? Yeah, it's beautiful. Know, so we do use the natural environment as well. Um, how often do the kids go outside? How often are they outdoor learning? We have a proper structured outdoor learning um, you know, twice a week. Okay. And that's when we'll go out and we will set up practical activities outside away from the play frames, but it's more like we've got water-based, sand-based. Okay. Um, we have giant tires, we have giant, you know, we have a woodwork room, we have all sorts of things where the children can go out and okay. do learning outside and that Fine sense. and gross motor skills all at once. Definitely. <laughs> but um, obviously we go out, I open my door when, you know, when the weather allows us yeah. to yeah. and the children can go in and out. So oh. I will set up activities outside as well. Fantastic. So, you know, we did a potions topic, so the children were outside making potions and they were using the leaves and the water and yeah. Cool. Much, yeah, very, cool. very cool. They loved it. Oh, that's awesome. Gosh, you're the perfect person to help us do this today. You, all, you have the answers for everything. This is great. But I noticed now, just off of your classroom, there's an extra space here. Uh huh. What's this one? Um, well, this is part of our role play area. Okay. So, to do with our toys, we've set up a toy hospital. Look at them in the blankets and everything. Oh, no. There's a dinosaur in the blankets. Even. We do. <laughs> and, and then again, oh, cool. we've got everything there. They can come and role play. Those so, are teeth, aren't they? That's, that's the teeth. Fantastic. Yes. Right on. And the idea for that, of course, you know, everyone knows that we do all our best learning through play. Yeah. And again, the questions that the children ask. And it's a great way for us to introduce ideas about them looking after themselves, keeping safe, and a really safe way to do it is with their toys. Yeah, for sure. And it helps them then also to look at, again, how the toys are made. And oh we yeah, to go back to the other yeah. project. That's fantastic, yeah. I even see this is my body. Perfect for a hospital in this area, yeah. that's great, yeah. And I know we've set it up, the children may take it in a completely different way. 
Okay. So my idea is it's a toy hospital, but again, there's freedom within here. They may very much focus on the reception area and taking phone calls and, oh, this is our giant phone, you see, so they can... Oh, it is. <laughs> <laughs> a little old school, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> so they can work on that. They might decide to act out a play. So they can write a play script if they want to, or okay. they can just record it. So we might put our iPads in here so they can record themselves making a little you know, film script and to share with the rest of the class. So it's quite good as well. Yeah, it is. Yeah. yeah. Uh, iPads, does, how does that work here? What do we use for technology in our classrooms? We have some iPads in the classroom. We are not one-to-one -one devices at this age okay. because you know, we feel it's more useful to have more practical work, sure. but they do have access to them. So what okay. I tend to do is have iPads in each area. So they choose to photograph or video or record their work. Okay. We can, we're encouraging them to do that. Yeah. We use certain apps to help them to um, put their work together, like pick collage or so mm. they're learning how to group uh, different project work together okay. and how that works. Um, we have a great technology room here. Mm. Which yeah, we the can, steam room yeah. there now. We're putting, there's one at NACE too, actually. Yeah. So yeah. We, can, we go in there yeah. so the children can explore some of the online Lego and the Osmo boards and those kinds of things. Okay. But we can bring them out to the classroom as well. So mm. we've been looking at simple coding. In year one, you're in already coding. We're coding in year one. Cool. So we use the B-Bots to help okay. with that. Yeah. So they can program the B-Bots to go along different ways. Yeah. They've designed their own map for that as well. They okay. Can, they can make their own world. Oh, that's the one. I'd be sitting there playing with that all day, yeah. actually. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, they, they enjoy doing that as well. So that's where we're at at the moment. Okay. Um, we have got a, a program that we follow, but we introduce that more in term two rather than but I guess for this young, the younger students and stuff, we're, we're careful about screen time and, and it's very, because I see lots of books and everything around your environment. Yeah. It's very much still that kind of tactile, physical, very much limited digital. Concrete yeah. materials, yeah. very much developing the language of mm. the children. Lots and lots of speaking, lots of listening, lots of getting them uh, good examples okay. of how we're speaking in English and they follow that and that's where the role play and you mm. know even outside we have our just there we have our own uh -huh, look at the stage we yeah, have yeah, our yeah stage. of course i should have highlighted that before yeah um Great. so you know and then we go do our outdoor learning as well they love going out there to do sure. put on real shows so they have all the costumes as well got a whole costume box they awesome. can go do the lot i could come play here more <laughs> i mean learn here more often <laughs> speaking well, of which though i see like lots of books and stuff over here too what's this area for um well, here... This seems like just a big white box, yeah. It looks like a big white box, <laughs> but, you Excuse know, me, I can just take my pen and I can just draw. Okay. Oh, looks like a big S, doesn't it? It does too, yep. Yeah. <laughs> Better add another bit in. Okay. We now have a road. And okay. the children can start their story. So they can, all the children can collaborate. So they can come and write on the board. They can add their own bits in. Um, they can bring the concrete materials and put them on here. They can mm -hmm. add the, the puppets in. So they can... It's kind of storyboarding, essentially building it's a... It's storyboarding a, yeah. and it's uh, non-threatening. Okay. So because it's they are collaborating, yeah. it, we can um, clean it off if they want to. Again, that's why we have the iPads here, so they can record what they've done. Oh, of course. Yeah. Um, so there's a record of it. Okay. But it's more about collaboration and them joining in. So. Okay. Yeah. Nice. It's been interesting the way it goes sometimes. Yeah. So the I guess right here there's a library. So you're building stories, and you've got another reading corner here. Yeah. So they like to come in here. They have the puppets that they can. They have a reading buddy to sit with them when they're doing their reading. Okay. They can still use the puppets then to help them act out the stories as well. So we change our books, you know, regularly. We have mm. a weekly library session. So we go to the library every week. Okay. And often I'll get the children to come and choose books for our book corner as well. Nice. So, so they can sit back and curl up and read or read to each other and everything else. Yeah. Great. Yeah. That's awesome to hear. And it's just, it can be a chill out space for them and, yeah. um, but a fun time as well if they want to act out the stories too. I can't thank you enough. 
that was a fantastic tour of a classroom. And it was like, that's it's exactly what we were hoping to, to demonstrate to all of our viewers and just kind of show off um, uh, the learning that happens in here. And thank you so much. You're going to stick around for our Q&A afterwards? Yeah, I'll be yeah. there. Okay, good. Can't wait. Um, so, because our admissions team right now is answering questions on the live feed, but we've also received a few questions from parents in, who registered for the event. They were like, oh, by the way, I want to know about... Um, so if you can help join us answer some of those questions, probably in about 20 minutes or so, okay. uh, that would be great. Yeah. Right. Thank you. Thank You're you. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to head up now and meet with Allison, who's with Shane, one of our other teachers here. We're going to talk a little bit more about the curriculum side of things. Thank you so much. You're welcome. We'll see you in a bit. Okay. okay bye bye. Cheers. Thanks. Bye. Hello. Welcome to our classroom. Uh, Corey just talking with Colette in other classroom. Now we are. Stay in, uh, stay in this car room with Shane. And thank you, Shane, for being asked today to answer a lot of questions because yeah. many parents are trying to ask me every day. And Shane, can you introduce yourself first? Yeah, thank you, thank you. So um, my name's uh, Shane Leaning. So I'm assistant head of primary um, at this school. So um, part of my role as well as being a teacher is uh, working across the whole school uh, for strategy and to ensure that students are, are learning the best. Yeah, since we are in the year one classroom now, can you give us an idea what will the school day, normal school day looks like? Yeah. Oh, hi, oh, hi guys. Sorry, <laughs> yeah, cheers. <laughs> um, yes, so um, normal school day here, I guess you would see um, busy and lots of, lots of things going on in this, this building, especially with the year ones ru uh, um, running around. Mm -hmm. um, the way we do learning at our school is a, a lot of topic-based learning. So there's usually quite exciting, engaging topics that the students are, are really are really enjoying and, and embedded in, in mm -hmm. their learning. Um, you can see here they've been learning a, uh, in the year ones recently about the Queen's Hat, which is this amazing story uh, of uh, the, a Queen's Hat goes missing in London and they go on a travel. So the students have been engaged in where might the hat be, learning about the geography of the UK and of London and then bringing it to, bringing it to Guangzhou. So totally engaged in, in their learning. I think that's the first thing you probably notice. Oh, that's nice. I think the students are really engaged and involved in the uh, classroom activities every day. And any other area students can join in a normal curriculum and course? Yes, yes. Yeah. So in, in the classroom, as I mentioned, there's this great topic-based learning. Mm -hmm. So within that topic, students are, have got a, an area and they'll look at the geography and the history and, and the science all around, all around that learning. Um, and that's in addition to English and maths. But outside of the, the main classroom, we're also so lucky to have a team of great specialists mm -hmm. um, at the school. So we've got... Um, Yourself included. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe, yeah, maybe me. <laughs> Um, so we've got some um, fantastic music teachers who are, who are Juilliard trained. So this is really great for us students. They get to go every week to a, a music specialist and really engage in, oh. in that kind of music learning, which is something that's actually quite different to um, many British schools in the UK where the classroom teacher does this. We're so lucky to have those specialists. In addition, we've also got PE specialists, which is oh. really fantastic. So the students get to go and practice their sports and do their activities with, with, with these specialist teachers. I realized that I didn't ask all that when we were in the other classroom. Um, what does that look like? Are they having art class every day? Is it every other day? Or how are those specialist teachers coming into the schedule? So what's great is it's quite flexible. So across a primary school, it's all about the whole child and it's all about the topic. So we try to make it as flexible and integrated as possible. So some weeks there's maybe more art projects going on. Some weeks the students are going to be kind of engaged in science and experiments in, in that kind of way. In other weeks there might be geography and students are outside kind of mapping. It, it all yeah. depends on where they're learning and we try to follow, follow the child and follow their interests right. um, for learning. So yeah, it changes. Oh, okay. that's good. Cool. Yeah, I can understand why the child are so uh, enthused as they come to here. And another question is because um, some part of our children, uh, students, are not from English-speaking country. What if? What can we do to help them if they are from uh, from the Chinese background or non-English country background? Yeah. So hopefully I can answer that because this is my special. This is yeah, my specialism. Yeah, that's so um, we have a, a really fantastic program here for students who are new to English. Mm -hmm. We have a very inclusive school. Our program's called SEALs, actually, and uh, you can see in many of the classrooms these little SEAL animals, actually, that the, the students connect with. 
um, but SEAL stands for Specialist English as an Additional Language Support. And we're really proud of that here actually because we have some amazing specialist English teachers who come into the classroom to support the students who need that extra support to mm -hmm. access the demands of the British National Curriculum because we have high expectations, but also to take them out of the classroom sometimes to do kind of intensive uh, functional English language lessons. So we, we have a broad approach with co-teaching and with kind of withdrawal to ensure that those students um, don't fall behind and that they can quickly, quickly catch up. And we see some amazing language progress in this school. Some of our highest results are students who started with very little English. Oh, that's good. That will help them to build up the confidence very soon, I think. Yeah. And since not Anglian International School in Guangzhou, they, it's a uh, early years and primary school. Mm. So, uh, can you can tell me more about the early years? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, early years is is fundamental. We see it as absolutely fundamental here. We have that those kind of high academic standards right at the end at GCSE and A levels and it all starts in the early years <laughs> yeah. um, and our early years teachers are really proud at kind of delivering uh, an education that's about developing the whole child mm -hmm. so in our early years setting you'll if you walked into a class you'd see a lot of play-based learning so kind of students learning learning through play there's big focus on um, like their personal their social social and their emotional development uh, which is really fantastic as well as actually keeping uh, starting them on an academic journey. So in our early years we're really proud we run a, a phonics program called Read Write Inc. That's a, a, an internationally recognized British phonics program which starts them in the first stages of reading. So we can actually, we're putting the building blocks in place for them to be academically successful um, later on. Colette was showing some of that in her classroom. It was really <laughs> impressive actually and the year ones are already starting into like multiplication and these sort of things that it's fantastic, yeah. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. right. And language development is, is so key. This classroom we're in now is, is one of our, our uh, SEALs class, classes. You can see, okay. like, you can see all behind me the, the early language that they're kind of building up um, to, to, uh, to go forward. Oh, I can understand that. Um, other than the early years, and especially like what you just saying, the primary, uh, the early, uh, the primary uh, years is a very vital time for build up the whole child. Mm -hmm. uh, but we, any specialized thing we will do for helping the child to develop the academic foundation during the primary years? Yeah, I think that's really important. Mm -hmm. And um, we have those kind of high academic expectations at the end and yeah. in, in primary that's all about developing the whole child but, but um, with those strong academics. So our students um, every day are engaged in reading and writing and maths as kind of the core of what um, of the British, British curriculum and we follow some programs of studies that are very well known and very uh, good in, in, the, in the UK. Mm -hmm. um, we also in terms of assessment, our, our teachers are actually very good at constantly assessing what's going on in the classroom and what the students are doing. So the British system is a little bit different to other systems. It's, it's very child-centered, so mm. our teachers are very good at looking at what, what, what is that child able to do now and what's their individual next step and how do I kind of build on, on their success um, that, that they're showing in the classroom. Um, and they do that every day with kind of, we call it formative assessment. It's kind of assessment all the time. Um, but at the same time, we also, our students perform really well in standardised assessments. We use some standardised assessments which compare um, to the UK and international and we are always kind of, our students are always on average kind of outperforming those international and the uh, British, British trends, which is really, really fantastic. And it, again, it's that great support. And remembering that, you know, many of our students are, are bilingual, like this is amazing, like the, what they can achieve even though most of our students are doing this in their yeah. second language, is just incredible. I'm inspired. I yes. understand. And because we have a test, and uh, just by, for the information, will the parents get any uh, assessment report for how often will they get it? Yeah, so, so we, we share very, very often with parents. <laughs> in fact, parents are always welcome like this, to, to contact their teacher because primary, we're lucky there'll be one point of contact, a classroom teacher who really supports the learning of the child. So parents are constantly in contact, whether that be at the end of the day, they pop into the class to have a chat over email. But we also have a, a kind of a, ri a rigorous report system. We have parent-teacher consultations mm. formally um, that happen 
throughout the year to discuss progress and we also report it and we're, we're very proud that we report against age-related British expectations so you will always know where kind of your child is doing um, mm. in related to their, their age and where they should be at and you can see you can see that progress quite clearly in our reports. Ah, oh, then I understand now. Corey, do you have any questions? I'm curious, because um, a lot of your answers are matching up perfectly with Kovats, especially because she talked about when she was doing assessments, keeping a book and keeping tabs on every student and, and those sort of things, uh, which identified a really personalized kind of mm -hmm. style of education for each, as you're saying, and the, yeah. the child focus. Um, your specialty, though, is the SEALs for, for our school mm. um, and that English language development. And you mentioned that some of the experts are coming into the class and sometimes we're taking the students out. Yeah. What does that look like when, a, when, when someone comes in and joins a class? Yeah. How does that work? Yeah, so we have that, we have that all the time, actually. We're mm. an international school and that means we've got change. We've got yeah. parents yeah. Who, are, who, are, who are moving to the city and, and joining. So we're, we're very kind of adept at, 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 at responding yeah. to that. And mm -hmm. classroom teachers are very, very used to it. So you, we will always have, the, the child will all, always have met with somebody from mm -hmm. the school in the admission stage. Yes. Um, like I meet with, I'm lucky enough to meet with most of the children who are starting yeah. um, at the school. And then we have a, a, a transition program when they when they when they come into the classroom. So that that they might usually would be paired up with a buddy, for example, in the classroom who might who might help them. Mm -hmm. We also have um, a, a scheme in school called the Young Interpreters. This is a student leadership position. So we have young interpreters in the school who are trained up in how to support new. English arrive, uh, in yeah. arrivals in our school and they'll buddy up, they'll find you on the playground and they can help the new students. Um, and that's, I mean, that's an amazing thing, our yeah, students yeah. actually leading on that support. And that's in, that's in addition to what the teachers do um, and, and the other support mechanisms that are in place. Ah, I understand. And thank you Shane today and answer me so many questions. And if you guys have any questions, just write to us in email. Yeah, you're a star. Thank you so ah, much thank for you. It was great. <laughs> no, it was great. And I'm sure our parents have lots of questions. They can throw that in there. We'll help answer too during the Q&A. Fantastic. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. See you. Let's go. Oh, Let's go. I'll come with you. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you very much, Shane. That was oh, fantastic. You. Fantastic. You. You're very much appreciated. Yeah. Thank yeah? you, yeah? Shane. Cheers. Yeah. Have a good day. Yeah. Cheers. Yeah. Thanks. So now that we've heard from the experts, uh, both Shane and Colette, we're on our way back down to our library. 对,今天我们见过校长,还有我们两位老师,然后回到我们的图书馆之后呢,我们会认真的聊一下我们整个招生的流程,小朋友来到学校之后,他会面对怎么样的面试或者一些笔试。OK? Okay. After you. Cheers